Hello, every folks, and good morning. So, uh, welcome to something that's like half review, half an explanation as to what uh, many of us uh, kind of see in this awesome game right here. So, this is Fell Seal. Uh, basically, this is, this is a game that's uh, well, it's come up pretty regularly on the channel for the last couple years here, um, as something that I regularly recommend to people who are looking for just a really solid SRPG experience, basically. Um, and uh, well, pretty much uh, as, as many. Uh, as, as many times as I've seen that, uh, I've seen the same comment come up of just like, well, you know, I, I looked at it and I saw the visuals and, you know, what you know what are you seeing in this thing? Well, that's more or less what we're here to discuss today. So, uh, all right. Basically, the deal with Fail Seal is like, you know how for, uh, for decades now people have been going and modding FFT and stuff like that? Then, you know, putting in stuff like, you know, randomizers, just new modes, new classes, all this other stuff. And generally speaking, you know, it's it's gone over pretty well. And, you know, maybe you wanted to have your situation where you had Solid Snake in your FFT. Basically, this takes a lot of the ideas that, uh, you know, that kind of come from that general mindset, as well as uh, a lot of the cool stuff that you've seen from the SRPG genre going back, again, a couple decades here, and just combines it into one very customizable, happy experience. So I will say, the, it's kind of strange to me that the visuals come up so often, because a lot of times you'll see... Um, uh, you'll see the kind of the same uh, thing thrown about of just like, well, you know, it. I took a I took a look at it, and I don't know, it, it didn't quite do it for me. But at the same time, you'll notice that at the same time, a lot of those folks will end up liking Disgaea, and that's basically the same visual style that they went for here. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, basically, the deal here is, uh, yeah, it's a uh, you know two D on two D. However, there's a lot of detail in you know in all the sprites and everything else. That's more or less what happens here. Like the you'll notice that some of the animations do look a little stiff. Now, what's the reason for this? Well, basically this was a, you know, an, an indie game, and obviously that'll happen. However, the actual reason behind a lot of the stiffness is because of the amount of interactions. See, that's what a lot of us, uh, a lot of huge fans of this game, really, really love here. Because you basically can have pretty much anything interact with anything. It's straight up board game logic of the highest caliber, and I love it! Um, like, for example, like right here, what I do with my main character this time around, well, uh, why not give them an automatic crossbow for an AoE, uh, you know, range attack, and then combine it with the ability to put spells onto physical attacks, and uh, basically send in a bunch of monster units in order to uh, have them, like, let's say, use a bunch of self-destruct uh, sacrificing attacks, uh, attacks to then combine with a uh, monster, uh, uh, not, not monster, uh, like a, a Beastmaster kind of deal, um, which basically increases her speed uh, potentially up to 40% every time a monster ends up going down. So if you have a team of half monsters, suddenly she's, you know, it's speeding around with her automatic black hole shooting crossbow, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, basically, any like any kind of weird combo that you missed from like FFTA2 or FFTA, FFT, or even the weird item combos you could do in Tactics Ogre, that's all in here and just kind of mishmash together in a sort of greatest hits type scenario. Uh, like you love the idea of the, uh, the lobber, for example, from uh, from Tactics Ogre, you can just combine as many throwing gloves as you'd like on somebody and turn them into an item specialist and uh, basically just combine stuff from there. Like let's say. If we like, if we look at the inventory, which, by the way, the inventory system in this, as far as I'm concerned, really should just be copied by every SRPG forever going forward, because this is just how it should be. General idea is you you more or less increase your stock as time goes on, but but each team that you face, as well as your own team, will have a stock in that fight. You basically can have thieves going and stealing stuff back and forth. When you use charm, you can basically burn the enemy uh, units through uh, you know through their uh, healing items and stuff like that. It's, it's a cool system because it makes your entire inventory feel very tangible. It doesn't feel like anybody's got an invisible wagon behind them. Um, and again, it just feels great when you have those moments where it's like, okay, you know, you charmed all the enemy units to go waste all their potions on your own guys, and then you went and you had your thief go in and steal, steal their uh, phoenix ashes, and, uh, you know, then you had your item specialist go in with your throwing rocks, which these throwing rocks, as odd as it may seem, are basically like the modern XCOM grenades, where they're in the early game, they're just a guaranteed low damage thing. These things, like it says right there, will always do 50. It doesn't matter how high the defense, it doesn't matter how high the evasion. It is a rock, it will always hit for 50. Now, the funny part is, you can just as easily then go to a character, and let's say, like, we go over to their items, and we tell them, okay, you know what? Instead of evasion up, you are now go uh, getting item potency. So now, using those items will have double the effect. However, uh, did this guy ever pick up Boone? 
Maybe like, let's see, Boon or Darn, he doesn't have it. Okay, so let's say we combine that with uh, the ability this guy is carrying around here, Critical Focus. Uh, where there's a, a buff in this that's uh, called Focus that will uh, cause them to do double damage with whatever they do next, um, you know, as soon as uh, as soon as they hit critical health. Now, there's other ways to get that buff. For every buff in this game, there's like a million different ways. Like, for example, uh, every time that this, uh, uh, this uh, good boy over here ends up uh, getting a kill, they will do a little victory dance, which will throw a couple buffs towards any units nearby them, as well as a couple debuffs towards any enemies nearby them. Um, so... And so, and so basically all of this combines to a situation where, like, you have this basic throwing rock that suddenly went from doing 50 damage uh, at it as, uh, as it was to uh, suddenly doing uh, 100 because of item potency, suddenly doing 200 uh, because of uh, focus, but then uh, also has increased range because of these throwing gloves, but then also, on top of that, um, if we uh, look at uh, uh, this right here, uh, he's got an ability called Patented Usage that allows it to be used in an AoE, so suddenly that, that that uh, little throwing rock uh, went upgraded itself from grenade to straight up, uh, you know, rocket launcher, and it's just, you know, it's just wonderful. All these little combinations can just basically function like this all over the dang place. Um, so it's just, it's just really fun to play around with these combos. And as you may have noticed, yes, you can pretty much make whatever characters you want. Like for example, I had Alphonse and Eleanor just take their vacation on this island. You know what? This is the, this is uh, the B route ending to Night of Lotus as far as I'm concerned. And yes, Solid Snake showed up. And if you're thinking like, okay, you know, I remembered FFTA 2 and I remembered that end game where there were a lot of characters that you didn't end up using because, uh, you know, they just sort of showed up with no skills but high levels, so what the hell's the point at the very end? Look at this. Like, let's say, you know, you wanted to recreate your FFT Journey of the Five uh, type experience. So let's go uh, just make a new dude here. So let's go to Recruit. Uh, I gotta give him a dumb name, so we'll just go ahead and go with Lonk. Sure. Um, or we'll just call him Hya, I think. Sounds, uh, no one ever truly got his name, so there we go. Um, so we'll do that. We, we're gonna change him to a, to a dude. Unless we want, do we, do we want Lady Link? Yeah, whatever, we'll go with, with the basic one. But, here's the deal. Every time you get a class, you get the ability to, uh, just go recruit that class at whatever level you want. And it tells you exactly what stats everybody's getting uh, per level up. Um, so in this particular case, um, I want him to train a bunch of classes along the way, so I'm going to have him train as a samurai. So, anyhow, uh, and by the way, you can just kind of adjust this uh, as you'd like. If you want, to, want somebody to go to a certain level and you want to train them up in the background, and you want to make sure that you don't mess up that training, you can send them out on side missions, basically giving them up to like 50 experience with every side mission. You just keep throwing them out in the background, and they'll keep just you know, doing random grunt work for you until they get to where you want them to be. Uh, or you can just do the usual old SRPG method of just having them slap around your own units for a little while, but any dang ways. Uh, this, uh, this outfit ain't gonna work, so we need something a bit more appropriate for Mr. Uh, Mr. Long here. Um, let's see if we get some kind of a tunic situation. I feel like this, this probably will work, but let's see. Get anything that's a little bit more fitting. Uh, I feel like they need as many belts and... Well, okay, he's a, he's changed as far as how many different outfits they went with. I mean, if we're going for... You know, let's go for the Breath of the Wild version. <laughs> he's doing a Breath of the Wild speedrun. Um, what about uh, headwear? We want him to have a pointy hat. That part is non-negotiable. Um, what do we got here, pointy hat-wise? My notice there's a lot of different hats and things going on. We'll just go probably with that one, just for the hell of it. Actually, no, he's got that climbing bandana. That thing is pretty darn uh, snazzy. I think it was brown. I'm not sure if it was actually brown. I. It's been like a couple months since I played Breath of the Wild, but I do remember finding that bandana and be like, wow, you can really uh, climb a hell of a lot faster now. Um, you know, gotta have the, the green uh, green undies here. Uh, let's see, chain, fix the, uh, the hair situation, because why not? Um, yes, I'm fully aware that this is really bizarre with no context, but don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. And, uh, yeah, let's just do, you know, I think that's probably fine. Let me go, maybe something a little bit shorter. Yeah, there we go. That works. Okay, so we changed their portrait out. What do we got portrait-wise for, uh, for this kind of dude? And you may notice there's a lot of references to a lot of different things in here. Um, so, for example, you know, you've got your totally not uh, Lance Hamilton from Tactics Ogre. you got your totally not Geralt over here. you got your totally not uh, other Lands from uh, Tactics Ogre. Totally not Yumel over here, uh, who's totally not wearing a uh, white mage outfit. Um, 
Guy, you're totally not Zargathrax over here. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it's just uh, it's just fun how much stuff is in here. But anyway, let's. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to give this dude. I almost feel like being tempted to go for that one, despite the beard not really making sense in this context. Or do we just stick? With, you know, maybe we'll just stick with this. Sure, whatever. Um, all right, so. So we'll, oh wait, he's at one, but we want him to be at, you know, the same level as our leader. So we'll go ahead and just level him up here, buy him for 20 grand. But he he's basically already good to go, uh, is the funny thing. Like, you can do this with pretty much any class, but like, let's go, let's say, you know, he's already, he's gotten some equipment on him. Sure, fine, whatever. But let's go over to his classes right here. Um, and you'll notice, okay, so most of it's grayed out. But if we go to his abilities, we'll see that he actually came up already trained uh, for his particular stuff. So we'll just put a bunch of uh, random stuff in here. It feels like a health expert should be on him. There we go. And basically like as you as you go up, you get more and more of this. Um, so I don't know exactly how it scales, but I do know that yeah, it's uh, it, it goes pretty uh, pretty hard on all this stuff. Um, so you uh, you get as many passives as you'd like, as many uh, you know, actives as you'd like. I'm actually ignoring a lot of the active skills here because I already know what I want to have as his uh, secondary class. Because uh, he's going to be a gadgeteer. I feel like Link absolutely needs to be a gadgeteer here. So, uh, anyway. Um, da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Removes all debuffs. Uh, restoring HP for each debuff removed. But it uh, feels like he needs a bow. You know what? Actually, we're going to leave him as a samurai, I think. That's uh, that's pretty fitting for him. And it's not like there's katanas in this game. So, whatever. Don't have to worry too much about uh, not making too much sense. Uh, there we go. We got uh, Gambler. We got Wrangler. And you might be noticing immediately, wow, there's a, there's a lot of classes going on. And yes, absolutely. It, it's 100% an absolute ton of classes going on in this one. Um, because it, again, goes very, very deep with all this stuff. So I mentioned earlier that in many cases, uh, this game feels like... Um, uh, th this feels like kind of all the strategy games you've ever played, uh, especially handheld ones, kind of going back, pretty much going all the way back to the 90s. Um, Basically taking a lot of those ideas, uh, combining that with a lot of the, uh, just a lot of the uh, cooler stuff that you could do, you know, more and more uh, as time went on. Um, just kind of cool stuff that got added to the genre. So, here. So he's already, he's already doing a samurai dude. We're going to go ahead and go with uh, en engineering as his, uh, his extra thing, because he's always collecting items. Uh, he's got a bow built into the samurai class, so that already works right there. Uh, going to go ahead and uh, give him a perfect focus, you know, to reference the, uh, the laser swords from uh, early Zelda there. Uh, probably going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, let's probably give him health expert, because he's probably been collecting hearts. Either... Either health expert or initiative. I feel like maybe initiative, because he probably would start pretty quick there. Um, and then probably might, uh, just getting a buff after being uh, targeted by any offensive action. And there we go. And apparently I did not do his name right, which is perfectly fine, because then we go back and we just rename him. Basically, anybody can just be <laughs> remade at any point. So, the basically, the uh, the customization is really what you're, uh, uh, kind of what you're showing up here for. Now... I mentioned earlier that you can customize everything, and I mean absolutely everything. I mean, you want to even customize how the AI functions? That's absolutely a thing. Um, you want to customize how many mechanics you're playing with? Absolutely a thing. Um, you want to customize uh, like damage scaling and levels and all that kind of business? Sure, why not? That's all right there. Like, if we go back to the menu here. I mean, if you wanted to make your FFT like 1.3 type situation, you go to custom uh, difficulty. Um, let's go ahead and just set up permadeath right there. So if anybody gets knocked out five times, they're just permanently dead. You can uh, weigh the random numbers in your favor if you want to go for a more modern XCOM experience. Uh, you want lem uh, you know level uh, level scaling to any particular degree? There you go. You want raw stats scaling up to 75% of uh, where they go? Sure. Why the hell not? As it says right there, it's probably not a good idea to use this. Uh, they probably this stuff won't be balanced anymore in general. You want more enemies? You want uh, them to have full access to all gear, that kind of stuff. Like this, you can do so much stuff. And you might notice right here, will enemies use drowning? This seems like a minor thing. You'd think how many uh, how many water tiles are there? But uh, this this is fell seal. This like what this game does for me is that it constantly surprises me. That's what I love about it. Like the customization is great. Like the overall aesthetics of it are great. It reminds me of FFTA, and it, like the balance of it feels like Night of Lotus, and that just feels good to me. And 
when I'm when I'm saying it constantly surprises me, I mean like the AI will come up with surprisingly smart bullshit on a very regular basis. Um, the, like the difficulty that I like to play it on here just gives them access to pretty much everything. So it's pretty much nasty in all regards, and you know it's probably uh, pretty unlikely that you'd get through many fights without taking a pretty severe amount of punishment. Um, but uh, like as far as how how deep some of these mechanics go, like this is. The pulverizer right here is uh, one of my uh, uh, one of my favorite units at the moment. They're just a bird that you could get early on. So their whole deal is they self-destruct. Now, they have two things uh, that they start off with the ability to automatically revive. They can self-destruct to uh, hit every enemy on the map, but they also have the ability to self-destruct a second time through a turnabout here, which means that they will essentially do have a secondary explosion after they self-destruct and then immediately come back to life then immediately get uh, given an instant turn by uh, one of the Beast Wranglers, at which point they will then go self-destruct and self-destruct again. So they have four self-destructs in a row. Uh, this is something that Mr. Vale was telling me about ages ago, and it is surprisingly fun to play around with. Um, but anyway, point being, basically, again, just like, uh, like Tactics Ogre there, anything can be overpowered. You can combine just about freaking anything into just about anything, and that's what makes it awesome. Like, for example, Mr. Angus McFife over here, uh, he is training to be a, well, a one-shot build. And that's that's another thing. On the higher difficulties of this thing, it's a very nice case of uh, if, you're, uh, if you're going for the swing, you better not miss. Because the AI is very good at, at uh, finding ways to both heal itself and completely cripple your team at the same time. It's one of the few cases I've seen where an AI actually understands patience and upcoming turns. They absolutely will hold off on that easy kill on another unit in order to delay the turn of a unit that's coming up, or to permanently kill off a unit that's uh, you know going to be a threat to them uh, pretty soon, or just uh, you know just disable somebody that's again about to act there. It's it's surprisingly refreshing in that regard. And if you're thinking like, okay, I've I've looked at some of the uh, stuff there, um, you know. What about bigger fights? I, I don't want the FFT style fights, I want the you know bigger Tactics Ogre style stuff. And so for example, let's look at uh, some of the stuff that the DLC added. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is one of the bigger arena maps. There's uh, several of them uh, that show up during the game, but uh, just to kind of show how some of this stuff uh, goes here. Uh, and in this case, uh, we've actually gotten a uh, friendly NPC to come help along, but anyway. So let's have this dude over here, let's have... Doggo over here. He's uh, he's ridiculously fast. We're gonna have Pliskin over here. Actually, we're probably gonna, yeah, we're gonna pl replace this one. We're just gonna go full like Alpha Strike mode on this team, I think. Um, and yeah, we just, I just basically went and remade all of our uh, all of our dogs <laughs> as different monster units. Um, uh, let's see, what else do we want to have here? Uh, by the way, if you're wondering what sorcerers are, basically same thing as FFTA illusionists. So that's always fun to mess around with. Uh, do we want Butt Dragon? We probably don't want Butt Dragon here, but we'll stick the Pulverizer over here. Um, which, yeah, um, there's there's an absolute ton of monster units in this. Um, and if you're wondering why some of them have weird names and some of them don't, uh, very simple. Um, well, they don't need them. Um, <laughs> Uh, when when it comes to uh, okay, when it comes to all this stuff, basically I recruited these uh, three right here off of the uh, the last fight that it, that uh, that I had gone into story wise, and I thought, hey, I, I don't know when you can actually recruit armadillos. I forgot, and sure enough, you know, it turns out you could actually immediately recruit them after that fight. So that's another feature of the DLC. Uh, with all the side missions that you can send people on, you actually will just recruit usually one of each monster unit for free. Uh, so that's uh, that's nice. Um, just kind of gives you something to mess around with. Uh, let's see, we're gonna get this dude a little bit better equipped over here, just to give him something more to do. Let's see, give him more jumpy boots, because we're in that kind of map, and give him more movement. There we go. Sounds good, he can go do stuff now. Alright, so, uh, oh yeah, we get nine on this one, I forgot, so we'll put her over here, put him over here for revives, um, and we'll put her over back here, which, uh, like, th that character in particular is kind of funny, because I was trying to explain, uh, like, my wife and I were sitting around with her switches on the couch one day, and uh, she was trying to uh, trying to understand what uh, this game was all about, and I was trying to explain it, but not doing a terribly good job. So, finally I was like, yeah, it's basically like chess, but you, you, make, your, uh, you make your units out of whatever you want, and so I just made her character out of, uh, uh, out of uh, 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 Animal Crossing that she was playing at the time. Alright, so... 
Okay, so what's this dude's uh, deal right here? So he's he's uh, he's a gadgeteer, so you can c just collect uh, gadgets as uh, as the game goes on. So he's just got a bunch of random crap that he uh, uses as tools. So we'll go ahead and uh, probably put uh, put thorns on you because he's going to be charging in. Um, so okay, uh, you'll notice, uh, like I was saying earlier on visuals and things like that, this game's deal is that yeah, it's. Uh, its movements do look a little stiff at times, but it's largely due to the fact that they have to interact with a bajillion different things. So, yeah, uh, you can kind of uh, kind of figure how that might be a little bit of a complicated thing to make ten billion different, uh, uh, you know, different effects for. So, <laughs> you know, generally uh, a lot of animations that can work in a lot of different situations. Which, uh, here, let's uh, let's go ahead and do this real quick. We want this dude to go quick. Which, by the way, if you're thinking uh, this sounds like the Smile Toss Infinite Move combo from FFTA, it kind of is, except it also kind of isn't. Um, so, like, uh, the uh, the Quicken effect in this one uh, forces uh, somebody to be tired, which means that they have to take a little bit of a break uh, between uh, bouts of being, you know, infinitely uh, infinitely moving. So this guy will, ha will essentially be uh, stuck for another turn before he's able to do anything interesting like that again. However... Like, as you saw right there, he is essentially a, uh, a nuking crit build with the ability to poison and bleed on crit. Um, he didn't uh, land the bleed that time, but that's fine. And you might notice that, yes, I love having a bunch of characters with initiative. Uh, why is... Oh, verticality, that's why. Yeah, the, uh, the traps don't have a whole lot of vertical forgiveness. But, like I said, if you wanted your, uh, you know, your bigger maps and stuff like that, it's right here. If you wanted your weird, like, Tactics Ogre challenge run strategies and all that kind of thing... You absolutely have that here, too. Um, as you may notice right here, in a lot of cases, I'm just throwing damage out there to force them to burn through their healing items, because they'll get very cheap with it. And as you may notice there in the back, they've actually got two cages that they can potentially unlock to get a free uh, temporary dog on their side. So that's just kind of neat there. Just have uh, our uh, dog go ahead and move forward here. Um, so yeah, basically what you're playing this game for is not necessarily the uh, the story or the writing or any of that, which, by the way, it's honestly not bad, especially after playing tri uh, uh, Triangle Strategy. it like It's honestly pretty uh, competently done. Um, basically the deal is you're like a rolling police station, more or less. Uh, your uh, main character is the uh, kind of the captain of the local precinct, um, so that's, that's kind of the explanation as to why they're just making their own little private army going around. Like, the deal is you're in sort of like a post-Ogre Battle type situation where there's just a bunch of demigods that won a war against a big evil thing, uh, t more or less ran uh, the entire place uh, for uh, for ages, and every now and then they retire. Um, and the deal is that uh, every time that they retire, they're supposed to pick replacements, sending a bunch of people out on a bit of a journey. And um, what this ultimately ends up meaning, and actually, do I want to go for the crit here? Uh, double barrier. I don't want to trigger their barriers. All right. Um, so what this means in this case is that, uh, yeah, you're basically, uh, you're supposed to be patrolling around and making sure that that goes off without a hitch uh, early on, and then stuff changes later. But anyway, it seems like the earliest of their units to act, so we'll go ahead and drop the allure on them. Um, and it seems like the pulverizer is going to act immediately after this guy, so he should attack their guys, and then, then we can uh, turn that off. So this is one of those moves I was talking about earlier, or was meaning to get to earlier. I love how every character, or every class in this game, has a ton of love clearly put into their whole setup. Like the samurai, with their little letterboxes on their moves, just like an old samurai movie. It's just wonderful, you know? You just love to see that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, so this guy's injured. We're, we don't want to trigger his stuff just yet, so we're going to teleport him out of there. Just to make sure he doesn't get hit by what appears to be a princess unit coming up. Um, I actually did not know the AI can spawn with princesses this early, so there we go. That's a thing. Um, which, uh, yeah, it's exactly what you think it is. I actually love the, uh, the way that they redid the, uh, the Lord and Princess for this game. Um, wherein they, uh, you know, they exist exactly like you'd expect them to exist, but they, um, uh, basically the, uh, the like, here, I'll, I'll show you. The, the princess is, uh, da -da -da, right over here. It's so like their deal is that they are still like a, a healing tank kind of deal, so they, they're more or less exactly cash as you'd expect, including the visuals kind of referencing that, but I don't think they spawned with a lord. But the lord is actually, instead of being a uh, kind of jack-of-all-trades unit, 
Uh, they're, uh, they're basically an artillery specialist, so they're just coming in and just, like, dropping ballistas on the field and stuff. It's great. It's wonderful. Um, all right, so... Uh, let's go ahead and do overreach. Let's just go ahead and shoot with a bow, I think. Just kind of tap this one. Okay, that's going to lower their defense a little bit. Eh, all right. These guys appear to be pretty reasonably able to resist all of that. But we can go ahead and break this guy's arm magically with uh, wind nonsense. There we go. Why not? So he's just started. He's not terribly optimized. He's got an early game sword on him. I probably should have given him something better. But that's fine. That's fine. Uh, equipment in this game, generally speaking, uh, does actually last a pretty long time. And a lot of these special effect type weapons do uh, do tend to have a, a way to uh, kind of sell themselves in the future. Um, you may have noticed that guy right over there with his uh, beast wrangling or uh, uh, beast master kind of deal. Um, he's basically like a, a mix of uh, like Pokemon trainer and uh, uh, forget that one class from uh, FFTA. All right, let's, uh, let's see here. Anybody need much healing yet? Not really. Man, 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 man. I freaking love this game, though. Uh, so this is, I mean, this this is really just one of those ones that you just kind of played for the for the strategy porn, more or less. Um, like I said, story wise, it's it's fine. It does the job well enough. Um, more or less, uh, what it kind of boils down to is that the individual like units and everything else, it, it, you can you can buy that they're doing what they're doing. It's uh, it's absolutely understandable. I mean, a lot of it just kind of comes down to uh, buddy cop type of stuff. A lot of the main characters you recruit along the way are just more or less other cops, and then uh, you just make your own squad as time goes on. Um, yeah, this guy's got some stuff here. There we go. Give himself a little pet and a mini llama right there. And so, like, for example, every time they pull out one of their pets, they've all got a bunch of little passives, so you can have a guy just running around like a poison cloud. The Beastmaster is a bit like um, a bit like the FFT Bard as well. So, like all their passive stuff is just going on in the background. Um, so they can they can run around throwing around a, you know a ton of damage and debuffs and whatever else in a little cloud everywhere around them. So you can take a tank unit with a bunch of pets, just kind of sitting around doing nothing except just passively hurting stuff. It's just great. All right, so this is why I love this combo right here. You might notice on the bottom left, there's a little heart with a knife through it. That is your crit rate. So this guy's whole deal is that he's got 40% chance to hit everybody on the entire map with uh, poison and bleed at the same time, which is basically gonna just melt their uh, their HP bar. It can't kill them, it can bring them down to one. But, like right here, he's got a chance to crit. Everybody that crits gets all those debuffs. Everybody gets a hit on top of that. This does trigger everybody on the map's uh, reaction abilities at the same time. Which does lead to some hilarious things, like early on a lot of enemies will be running around with thorns, uh, which uh, basically uh, gives a, uh, a, well, basically uh, uh, gives you a percentage of damage reflection, kind of, but at infinite range. Which just results in seeing a bunch of, um, just a bunch of spikes flying in from all over the map and just like 50-50-50-50 dead. <laughs> it's... It's, uh, yeah, it, that strategy does not work on all maps. If you see a bunch of dogs or an, a bunch of units with, uh, thorns, it will absolutely not work. Now, the funny part is, they will now kill off this guy because they're at low health, which is fine. They have they gave themselves a buff, but now they will self-destruct again. The self-destruct can also crit. Interesting. Okay, the faux shard and a, and a meteorite. I forget what the faux shard is. That's, uh... So those little uh, bandit kawadilis, uh, they're those like little, you know, Ewoks with a backpack, more or less. They can spawn on, um, well, they have a chance to spawn everywhere you go. But they have a, like, if you think of quest mode from Night of Lotus, they're basically that on two feet. Uh, if you can beat them before they run away, they give you unique items. Um, like, sometimes they'll just give you endgame weapons. Sometimes they'll give you other neat stuff. Uh, sometimes they'll give you, like, like uh, stone tablets, which allow you to unlock a uh, character later. Um, which, by the way, I never did touch on one other thing, which is that you can basically... Uh, uh, there's a bunch of, like, little side quests and stuff hidden in the maps, which is pretty fun. Um, so, for example, uh, there's a bunch of these little obelisks uh, hidden all around, um, uh, all around the map, um, which allow you to... Uh, 
uh, to go in and uh, do a few little extra side events and unlock some uh, different stuff as you go on. Um, Classes-wise, it's not all just the FFT type of uh, mechanics, uh, but you'll also notice cases where, for example, uh, you uh, you can get class marks. Like, for example, this guy's a werewolf. Uh, that's one of those classes that you can just make a, uh, a, a, a class mark for um, that basically will allow a couple of units to become that class. Um, Actually, a lot of them feel very ogre battle in that respect because you're making a bunch of crests that you uh, you make for specific units and all that kind of thing. Um, let's just go ahead and fire some explosive bolts at this one. Uh, scout earlier, by the way, was a, a move that both uh, reveals traps and increases crit rate, which is why they got a crit right there. Big numbers mean like if the numbers are physically bigger on screen, mean that they got hit by a crit. Um, it's just again. You can tell the amount of strategy porn going on here. There's just so, 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 so much. And seeing the uh, the AI come up with, you know, more and more weird stuff just feels wonderful. I, It just feels great to repeatedly be able to go into a fight and just see something new every time, you know? Um, so you may have noticed that there's a lot of re very strange builds, and the uh, the main classes of most characters are just... Uh, uh, those are set, but everything else from their equipment to their... Uh, uh, to their uh, skill setups and everything else are entirely just made up on the fly as the game goes on. Um, Alright, so let's see. This dude has no MP at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna... Let's see. Do, hmm. um, Alright, we're gonna quicken him. He's gonna go kill off that samurai over there. In order to... Uh, well, just get rid of that guy, frankly. And then we'll kind of uh, kind of adjust from there. I can't have him uh, self-destruct a second time just yet, but his next turn's coming up soon. Okay, so we see that he's got a uh, he's got a Mystic Shield, so that's MP Shield more or less. Um, so we need something that uh, gets past his uh, his stuff here. Unfortunately, I don't think he actually has anything that gets past his stuff. Does Hal do it? Uh, no. Okay, it's it's all gonna MP shield here. That's fine. I so just like uh, the FFTA type uh, type of uh, games, there uh, your characters do have um, uh, do have uh, a bunch of abilities that can uh, bypass counters and uh, that kind of thing. And oh man, my nose is being weird again. That's no fun. All right, was hoping for the crit there. That would have been the kill, but oh well. Now he's got focus, and now he's gonna insta kill somebody if he ever gets a chance to move. But we're going to do this thing right here where we, let's say, mind control one of these. Here you go. Why don't you go do something? Wonderful. All right. And by the way, yes, I do have this guy carrying around an ice spear just because I like uh, Ozark spear in uh, Night of Lotus and absolutely no other reason. It'd be far more practical for him to carry around a knife for the speed bonus, but I just like him having an ice spear. It's funny to me. All right. So they're over there just collecting pets as they do. Getting a better and better regen, apparently, is uh, their their current deal. Right, so I'm going to have her go down here. I'm going to have her go revive somebody. I'll probably uh, revive Pliskin over here next to this trap. Okay, I did not pick the right direction that he was facing, unfortunately. So they might not hit that trap, but we'll s Oh, they did. Okay, wonderful. Uh, traps, by the way, do actually end uh, the unit's turn. So that's fun. All right, they've got... they're a vessel, which basically means that they are a uh, FFT-style summoner. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you may notice I am mentioning a, a hell of a lot of, like, oh, they're this from this thing, this from this thing, because, yes, there's a lot of that. Um, whatever franchise you loved, you probably will have those units here. There we go. Get rid of that one before they one-tap somebody. Ah, this system feels just... it just feels great. And if you're wondering, like... Do you need to memorize all this stuff? No. Being surprised is part of the fun here. Um, and I want to point out, again, as far as visuals and everything else, you might notice here, you can tell that there was a lot of love put in, into the animations and things. Um, and I mean, like, a lot of it. Like, anytime that there's a locus ability, it just it just makes me uh, giggle a little bit. Like, for example, the, uh, uh, the tier 3 basic water spell there, is just just a whale coming up and eating somebody out of the out of the ground, and like the, the lightning one is a freaking Zapdos coming up and sky bombing somebody. It's it just feels like there was love put into everything. She's just gonna go play some jazz over there for uh, for their units. So 
the, the Wranglers over there are monster specialists that can just do map-wide effects specifically for monster units. So, for example, if you wanted to order every single monster to attack the tile in front of them, FFT mime style at the same time, the option is there. Whatever options you want, this game's got them. I don't know how much how much clearer I can be that, again, this is strategy porn. It just feels great. Every combination that you wanted is here. Like, I don't have the slightest clue what's going on in the story right now, and I don't really particularly care, because, you know, instead we're just having these interesting, you know, chess battles kind of situation. Am I... well, I already covered the chess battles, or the uh, the actual story is actually pretty, uh, pretty darn uh, competently written. Now, I know for a fact that this guy absolutely had some way to bypass stuff here. Uh, do you have any... We're just going to test out everything. Gutter Snipe? No. Uh, Grubbling? No. One of you? Okay. Let's see. You know, with Renew, gain some effect. Let's see. Deals thunder damage. Uh, chance of inflicting slow. Uh, let's see. Restores health. And Okay, that's the laser. Um... <laughs> okay, apparently I'm just going to... Okay, I've got a unit coming up. Whatever, fine. We'll, uh... Let's go ahead and do a blazing flourish on this guy, and, uh... Which, yeah, this guy is, uh, more or less the FFT gladiator mi uh, mixed with the uh, FFT monk. Or, FFT a gladiator mixed with the FFT monk. All these classes, again, there's, like, a friggin' hundred of them at this point. They just kept adding more and more and more, and it... There's so dang much to play around with. There... I'm pretty sure there's no build that you can't make at this point. Um, so... It's just fun as far as that goes. Alright, uh, I mean, we might as well just go for the stab. Honestly, there's... Oh, 50%. He is blind. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, this is absolutely one of those cases where we can, uh, we can show off that, uh, that item type situation, because I believe I forgot to actually put evasion up back on him. That's why he's been getting completely rocked, but, oh well. Okay, can't use patented usage right now, but that's fine. That's fine, whatever. Guaranteed 100 damage on this guy. There you go. He's blind. It doesn't matter. The rock will always hit. You do not question the rock. The rock is magic. Alright. Um, this dude is... Uh, it's worth... You know what? Do we want to go for this guy? Okay, she's got sniper shot coming up. She can just ice him next time, I think. Um, which, uh, a lot of the uh, classes will obviously have their super moves, but unlike uh, the FFTA games, you don't actually have to... Uh, go out of your way to collect certain weapons in order to get them. You can just kind of have everything right away. Um, and if you're thinking, you know, that you're worried about grind or whatever else, again, you don't really have to, uh, don't really have to worry about it. Um, you can passively train everything. Actually, that's one of those things that you may notice uh, earlier when I was showing off the classes, that I have a lot of masteries on a whole lot of units, but, uh, basically 40 hours of playtime, it would have been impossible to get all those mastered in that time. Well, I'm sure there's ways, but... For, uh, for the purposes of this discussion, it would have functionally been impractical to do so. Um, there we go, just do some of that. Have exactly one attack ability on her, uh, just for the purposes of finishing units off, because she's got a thing that passively raises her uh, magic damage uh, for every turn that she doesn't do anything. Um, or rather, that she doesn't, doesn't deal damage. Any dang ways. Um, so... Oh, I'd completely lost track of what I was, uh, what I was actually talking about there. Dang it! Dang it, brain, why? Alright, they're sleeping. That's fine. They're gonna, their sleep is gonna wear off. That one's probably gonna take a... Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, actually, wait, they're on our side, right. We'll pretend that was intentional. I... yeah. <laughs> and right there, that's why that, that poison bleed thing is, uh, is so dang uh, insane. That they're just sitting and melting away their, uh, their health bars pretty consistently. Um... And you may notice that they uh, have not been reviving except for that one unit that just got taken out. You know why? Uh, because they're... Uh, <laughs> uh, earlier, that self-destructing uh, bird uh, has an ability on them that uh, means that any time... Ooh! Okay, apparently they can order him to attack too. There's that attack ability. I love that there was a chance to show that off. Um, that's just wonderful. Uh, anyway. Um, so... Uh, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and move on here. Yes, I completely lost track of what I was talking about again. It's just it's just one of those days. It's definitely one of those days. Um, now I want this guy to take multiple turns because I want him to do some stuff to that bird. So he goes here. 
Gives a little bit of a regen to that guy. You're going to go quicken him to immediately give him a second turn. This is the, the great thing about uh, having peddlers and, uh, or rather, uh, 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 gamblers on your team. They, they can be revived and instantly give that turn back. So, let's see if... Uh, oh, yeah, the bird left, didn't they? Well, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um... <laughs> Have you go over hereabouts. Do another revive on this bird. The only downside of this strategy is that this bird takes so many injuries per fight uh, that they, uh... They, we, I more or less have just taken to using a sorcerer on the earliest uh, level map in the game and just, uh... repeatedly causing them to, uh... uh to, uh... And to just nuke the entire map, uh... repeatedly, which is, you know... Repeating repeatedly is not a very, not a very uh, sensible thing to do, but whatever. Words are hard. Things happen. Such is how it is. So he's just going to go ahead and take two turns. Move his butt over here. So uh, go ahead and give her her turn. Slight. I'll actually, why even bother with that? We're going to go over here. I'm going to give this bird a turn. Give him a chance to self-destruct again, just because it's funny. There we go. Just because it's amusing. Alright. And if you're wondering why I'm putting them behind them, uh, just like FFTA, uh, going uh, going behind will cause bonus damage. So they explode there. Their secondary explosion will do nothing because they're already dead. That one exploded. I think that's everybody cleared out now. No, it just hit all those down there. As they're suddenly regrouping at the bottom of the arena. So some of these bigger maps, this is why they didn't exactly make them a fully standard thing throughout the game. That, uh, you know, as you go on, um, you know, some of the uh, the maps do end up uh, getting kind of front and back lines and kind of, kind of just keep going backwards. So let's see. I think it's Thunder that these things are weak to. Yes. Uh, there we go. Let's just snipe that. And yes, I could give her a higher power crossbow for more fun effects, but I just love the AoE thing, because sometimes the uh, AoE ends up becoming hilarious. Alright, you're gonna go here. In fact, actually, you're gonna go over here. You're gonna quicken Wife Lady. She's gonna go revive somebody down there. And uh, you may have heard the rule before that uh, speed is the king of uh, strategy games, and uh, that, I mean, it's... So while it's true here, I did mention earlier that the AI is fantastic at figuring out momentum. Um, there we go, this guy's gonna go and do some business, I think. He's gonna go bring him back into the fight. Good lord, his equipment sucks, but whatever. <laughs> really should have, uh, equipped him better before going, you know, into full, uh, full-blown endgame material, whatever. Um, which, by the way, there's a lot of fun things you can do with, uh, with a lot of these items. Like, for example, the, uh, the Springer is just a punching glove that does more damage if you, uh, cause them to hit some, uh, hit something. So just, like, punch them into a wall. If they hit another unit, they'll break that, or they'll, uh, damage that unit. There's a lot of little fun combos. Okay, interesting, uh, Fellblade Beastmaster combo. Didn't really think about that one. One of these times I saw somebody that came in with, uh, dual sledgehammers and, uh, basically every damage buff you can think of. Alright, let's have the dog move over here. I forget if I put his jump back on him. But we're gonna go ahead and activate this. I forget if this actually puts them on our turn. We might as well, just to see. There we go. So he's our friend now. I believe he's our friend. Let me, let me double check. So they're, they're giving an attack boost to all of our uh, all of our monsters. That's a very, very helpful uh, NPC. Um, let's see. Okay, well... They're gonna go for Blood Trophy. That basically means that they're uh, that that unit won't be able to revive. There's a few moves like that, quite a few, in fact. Um, they basically will do that in different ways. Like for example, if you have a Lich or a Necromancer or something like that, you can uh, bring back uh, an enemy unit as one of your own units, which will uh, uh, which will basically give you uh, give you a free unit that's uh, unable to revive for the opposite side. So they come back with the same health and everything. Um, but they're just a mindless zombie that runs around slapping things. It's nice. Alright, that's probably gonna go badly. Okay, that that did in fact go badly. Oh well. That happens. These things happen all the time. Alright. 
So we're going to have him speed himself up. You can absolutely spam the hell out of double moves with this, as long as you have MP. Which even MP, like, very tiny differences in MP are something that you see very regularly making a difference in this game. So you have, for example, the ability to start with, uh, with extra MP, or just boost a tiny amount of MP for everybody. It's basically every little thing, every little piece is just another piece of a really, really big puzzle. And it, it's just, it feels so good. Like, I cannot stress that enough. It just feels so good. Um, I'm going to see if we can, by chance, roll a rebirth on this guy. Um, oh, mind plus crit plus. Okay, that's uh, that's going to be uh, game over as soon as that hits then. <laughs> um, now we'll just go ahead and use some healing lasers, because why not? There we go, just improve his attack a little bit, because uh, the bird's uh, damage scales with how high his health is. Um, there we go, we'll get some more pet effects going. What are you going to do? Uh, let's go ahead and maybe quicken you. Well, actually, there's no point in doing that. Yeah, so it's funny that if you if you release the dogs from the cage, they're just your friend now. It's it's cute. It's a nice little touch. There's so many nice little touches. You can tell that there was so much love in this game. Um, all right, so let's just go go ahead and wrap it up so that we can show off some more mechanics because why not? And in fact, that Beast Wrangler is going to be at the highest health, I believe, so we want to do as much damage as possible. So what's his crit rate at right now? 65%? Beautiful. Let's go ahead and self-destruct everybody. <laughs> and double crit? No, not double crit, but pretty darn close. And there we go, that should be checkmate right there. You just beat him with a stick? No, not quite enough, but this will be. Okay. He is one shy of that being... Alright, whatever. Survive with one health, why don't you? Rude. Okay, and for a second there I was worried because one of those uh, scales off how low your health is. <laughs> there you go, pet effects uh, just doing damage in the background. There we go, and almost 400 damage. You may notice that monster units are uh, very potentially uh, min-maxed, because uh, they you can raise their stuff up by a certain percentage every time you do stuff. Um, also, their uh, MVP rank is based on how much uh, damage they personally did. You'd think the Pulverizer would have won that off of doing thousands on their own, but I believe it's based off single hits. Anyway, um, so, you know, there you go. Like, that's... You can tell, there was there was so much going on in that fight, so much stuff to adapt to. The AI regularly comes up with new surprises and will, you know, will do some pretty fun cheese every now and then. Um, so it's, it's just fun to go back to, play around with, all that kind of thing. Um, out of curiosity, what does this thing do? What's the faux shard? Let's see, it just increases damage. Okay, so that's just a straight damage upgrade. Um, or like, by the way, as far as unique items and things like that, like you got one right here that just gives you a random buff if you were to get a kill with this thing. Um, and equipment wise, that's what I didn't cover earlier. So the flippers. Okay, so, um, basically there's an instant death mechanic with drowning, uh, where, for example, uh, one of the things that has been really funny to see the AI come up with, uh, is, uh, the, like the samurai's got a, got an ability, uh, called, uh, uh where, where was it here? Uh, called Razor Wind. So basically, it allows them to have increased range on certain one-tile abilities. But then they go and they combine it with the uh, the mercenary skill set, which is kind of like the uh, the warrior kind of deal from uh, uh, from your FFTA type stuff. And uh, and they will effectively um, they'll effectively just have like a guaranteed knockback back move at range that will just push somebody into a lake and drown them. It's just kind of funny. Anyway, so that'll be that. Um, Usually I, I like to uh, wrap up, uh, you know, playing this for a moment by just throwing a bunch of people into side missions. So, like, you got a whole bunch of different stuff, like right here, you know, a whole bunch of ability points out of this one. So, just like FFT, you've got spillover experience. So, like right there, I want some people to learn uh, sorcerer type stuff. So, I'll throw out three sorcerers, a duelist, and whatever else. Um, just kind of throw them into a mission to go learn some things, go maybe train up some of these new units that I haven't really used for anything, and they'll just come back with stuff like, uh, you know, bring them back, bring back money, or they'll bring back items or whatever else. Like, uh, Age of Sight ingots are used for making elemental shields, so we'll just go ahead and, you know, pick up a few things here, just throw out some of those armadillos and whatever else. Um, 
and you can customize all your different regions right here to just give you a bunch of different bonuses uh, based on kind of your location. Like you see there in the bottom left how many different upgrades are happening while in that particular part of the island. Just point being, some games go for story, some games go for a lot of different things, but this game is all about the mechanics. It is all about the mechanics. So, it just feels wonderful. I absolutely adore it. This is why I get so damn excited about this game, because there's just always stuff going on. So, anyway, that'll be that. I gotta get going. Y'all have a good one.